We're out here to, to offer help to fathers and mothers so they love their babies. Ladies. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, can we talk to you, ma'am? There's no, it's not raining out here anymore. Yeah, it's not raining. Morning, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm Nicholas. This is uh, Miss Crystal and. And let's go on. Are you here for an abortion this morning? No, I'm not. Um, I brought somebody that I that I'd make them honor. Someone that you know? Yes, and I want to be here. alone. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um Is that why she's here? Do you know? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was just well, I saw the, the van and I saw the mm -hmm. scripture on the front and I just I just was curious about it because I've never seen Wait, the what, scripture about what scripture? Oh. Oh, that was on that band. I didn't get to read it like it. Is it the know? one on the back? That's um, nice. yeah, it depends on which one you. I can well, quote it. I can quote it to you. No, <laughs> I just haven't seen a scripture about relating to you know this topic. To abortion. Yeah, oh, okay. and I just was curious about. It. Well, the yeah. the Bible has many things to say about it. Yeah. That in Proverbs six, God says that He hates the hands that shed innocent blood, which is Morning. what this is here: innocent blood being shed, mm -hmm. and also, God put it on our conscience, the law of God. The sixth commandment. Do you know what the sixth commandment is? I don't know exactly the order. It, yeah. it says, "You shall not murder." Right. Yeah. No, no exceptions. You shall not murder, and so that and that's that's in the Bible, Exodus chapter twenty, Deuteronomy chapter five, and it's also written on every heart, every conscience here, every conscience in the world, the, the law of God that's written on our. That, that's how we know right from wrong, good from evil, because we all have that. We don't. You don't even have to open a Bible to know that, and so, and God says that. Um, this child sacrifice, that, that's what this is, parents sacrificing their children. Um, you probably haven't thought about that before or thought of it that way. Because I have kids. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I kept both of my kids. I was in, in nursing school when I got pregnant, but I decided to keep my kids in But um, my sister, she's younger than me, and she's single. I'm married. Uh -huh. And she's made up her mind, but I didn't want her to come by herself. Do you, do you think that she's open to willing to change her mind? Like, especially if she knows there's help available? No, Cre just the way she's talking, is, no. I Has know I, my sister. Does she understand that it's murdering another person? <laughs> she, she doesn't see it that my sister's on the phone. Anymore. But yeah, um, I don't know how, how she views it. She's kind of, she and I are different. I'm more outgoing, she's quiet. So I don't know how she is. No, I was just curious for myself because I've never like read anything in the Bible about it. So I was just curious so, as to what that scripture said on the hood. Oh, that that was uh, Romans chapter one. Okay. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because that which is known about God is evident within them because God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his divine nature and eternal power have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. And that's, that's what we are today in America, especially more than any other nation. We, we, we suppress the truth and unrighteousness that's why people come to murder their babies, even though they can see ultrasounds of their, of their beautiful babies in the womb. And even though Christians come out and offer them help, they, they know this is murder, because God's put that in their heart, you shall not murder. And even Kansas law recognizes that these are human beings. What, um, Kansas law says that the human beings begin their life of fertilization. So even our own, the law in the state recognizes that these are human beings. The unfortunate thing is that it gives a, it gives immunity to moms who murdered their children. And, but, um, but the law of God, that, that's what it says, that you shall not murder. And, and God views children as a blessing and a gift. It's Psalm 127, three. Naomi. Children are a gift from the Lord. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. And aren't they, aren't you crazy in love with them? Yes. Yes. 
and you can't you can't describe that kind of love until you're there. That's, that's what I call her, but at the same time, I don't necessarily know her. Because you know, I can't. You know, would she be open to going and having a sonogram, listening to Gage's heartbeat? Even free? I asked her. That's too bad. Why, why do you think her mind's made up so much? Any idea? Um, I'm sure it has something to do with like her being single and then okay. the father and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't know because I had my first child at 19. So, and the second one, it, um, not, not at 19, I got pregnant at 19. I had my first one at 20, the second one at 22. And for me, I've always wanted a family. So, our parents are married, everything. So, I guess I think that's her. We didn't grow up like that. So she kind of, I guess, feels like she's starting a bad cycle. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, let, let me, let me, um, and I don't, I don't know if I got your name. Chantel. Chantel, okay. N Nicholas, I think I told you, but uh, uh, Chantel. Um, I, um, you're, you're an aunt right now of a, of a precious baby. I don't know if, they're, if they have, if she has born children. Or, okay, so you're, you're an aunt of a, of a baby in the womb who's about to be murdered in here. Let me, let me share this with you. Um, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it brief. Over 20 years ago, I, I, I'm an uncle. Mm -hmm. Over 20 years ago, my nephew was murdered in the womb. Mm -hmm. I, had no, I had no idea it was happening. I didn't even know, I did not, I didn't even know about this at the time. I didn't know that babies were being murdered in my, in my, my country, in my city. I didn't, no one talked about it, so I had no clue about it. I found out about it uh, years later. And I was horrified, and that's that's a big reason why I'm I, I'm doing this today because I I ask God, please let the murder and the evil done against my nephew, please that was great evil, please use that for good, and uh, using me to help bring this to a, to an end, this Holocaust to an end, this injustice to an end, that and that's what God um, says in Genesis chapter 50. Um, I don't know if you know the Bible very well. But, yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. Our, our dad's a pastor, so. Wait, yeah. they don't even know. So. Your, your dad doesn't know? No, neither one of my friends. What do, you, what do you think? He would think about this. He has his views, but he feels the same way you all feel about it. And, but for me, me knowing my sister, you know, you see, she, she has an uncle for a pastor, so do I. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if she doesn't want them to know. I, and see, my, my dad is not a, a very judgmental person. So she has her own reasons for not wanting to tell me when I, you know, when I got pregnant. You know, they were like, well, you know, the baby's gonna be here. What, what's the point of being mad about it? But for her, I guess, far as she knows, he'd be more disappointed in the fact that she got an abortion and her getting pregnant. Uh, that yeah, was that? He would be more disappointed in the fact that she got an abortion yeah. and her being pregnant. Yeah. But yeah. um, because you can redeem having a right. child out of wedlock. Like, yes. You can't redeem. You right. can't bring that child back, right. And, right. and that's that's gonna haunt her the rest of her earthly life if she goes through with it. I feel like it too. Man. And I, I just and I, I want to continue with with that with what I was saying. I couldn't do anything about the murder over 20 years ago because I didn't even know about it. And that's and even though I had no part in it, I didn't even know about it. That still haunts me today. I carry that burden with me pretty much every day, knowing that that I never got to hold my my. I don't know what gender that the child was. I just. I just, I, I just assume nephew, yeah. a boy. Um, I never got to hold him, never got to play with him, never got to play basketball or football with him. That was taken from me. And, um, and, but I can do something about it today as far as, um, I guess I've talked to other uncles and aunts at, at these places of death and yeah. told them the same thing, like, you, and, and this is for you, Chantel, you have an opportunity right now. I know it's hard. Believe me, it's hard for us to be out here. Yeah, we uh, I, I don't want to be here, believe me, but um, we're here because we know when and where our neighbors are being murdered. And you have an opportunity here that I never had, that I, um, that you have an opportunity, even even if your your sister won't listen um, or, you know, refuses to listen, you have an opportunity to at least try, maybe try, maybe try more, like call her, text her, and I don't have that. She's already gone through the, so she's just still in there at this point. The murder's already taken place? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Or? Yeah, she texted me when they gave her the, the medication and stuff. Well, but, uh, the, the, did she take the first pill or the second pill? I don't know. I didn't ask because I've never been through a process like this, so it's kind of hard for me to... So, 
she, she's she's not here for a surgical murder. She's here for the chemical pill. I think I have no clue because I don't know how far along she is. The, well, the, the, the I'm asking because the chemical pill. Um, it can be reversed. It, yeah, it can be reversed. It the um, the first the um, if you take the first pill, it's not too late. It can be it can, as long as they don't take the second pill. So it, it may not be too late. If she's taking the first pill, it's not too late. Well, I don't know. All I know is this I don't is, know how uh, long she is. I know she's gonna be here for some hours. So it's know. it's still it still may not be too late if um, I mean they she may think it is or whatnot, but but yeah, if she's just, if she's taking the first pill, it's not too late. They're not gonna let anybody come in with them because I know she said in the paperwork. Ask her to come out. Huh? Say, tell her it may not be too late. There are Christians here who will help you. There's think, a place. I that, think what he's trying to say is, even if not for her, for the sake of your own conscience, if you think that you will be haunted like Nicholas someday by knowing your niece or nephew was willingly brought here to be killed, say something now. Get that out, and so that your conscience is clear. And then what she decides to do is on her. But you know that you'll be at peace with at least trying to say something. To her. And, and to add to that, um, it bothers me. It still haunts me today. It's a burden to me today, even though I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even know about it. That was going on. I didn't even know babies were being murdered at that time. I was, mm -hmm. I was still an unbeliever. I wasn't a Christian. Okay. But, and I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm speaking this, not point, trying to point my finger in your face. I'm just trying to be honest with you. You drove her here, mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity now to at least try. You may, you may fail, but to at least try. I never had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I never had it. Mm -hmm. And. And there have been others who, um, boyfriends, um, friends who've gone in there, to play these places, and and got and got their girlfriend or their wife out or their friend out, and or they or they at least tried, and you have that opportunity that I, I, I was never I never had, so I mean that's and saying that that's going to haunt you even more. Mm -hmm. it, it haunts me today, even though I had nothing to do with it. You could you think of how much more it's going to haunt you. If you think it's Take a screenshot of this and send it to her and say, Are you sure this is the right thing? Um, there's time to reconsider. Is that flyer you gave her, does it have the same information? I think so, yeah. As compact? Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, at least try. And I don't know, maybe that's irrelevant depending on. But if, but it's like a lot of times, even if you think that it's going to be, you try to save someone's life and you don't think it's going to, you're going to be able to, you, that doesn't stop you from trying. Yeah. For, we do that for born people, but for little babies in the womb, it's like, if there's even a, a slim chance, don't waste it. Because it's not going to be there for very long. And once, once your nephew or niece is dead, well, not only say once, but if that happens, that's going to haunt you. And you're going to have the... And it, like I said, it's going to haunt you much more than it haunts me that you had the opportunity and to do everything you possibly can. And I, again, I know that this is a hard thing to think about. Well, the um, easy thing is just to let, let the murder happen unless, unless it's already happened. Um, but like I said, like what, what we're pleading with you to do, Chantel, is to do a hard thing. Right now we're doing a hard thing. So we're not, we're not exhorting you or encouraging you to do something that we're not doing ourselves. Um, I can't tell you how much I don't want to be out here. <laughs> yeah. I, um, it makes me it makes me sick because being around death and I'm an introvert, um, being this close to people makes me nervous. But mm -hmm. Jesus said to deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. And He said, greater love has no one than this, than that one laid down his life for his friends. So if I'm not willing to do that, if we're not willing to do that, how can, how can we save our Christians, right? Yeah. And. So that's that we're having to deny ourselves by being here, mm -hmm. and and but that's in America. That's not something that, that even a lot, a lot of professing Christians do deny themselves, mm -hmm. and that's that's been a lost. What Jesus said there, that's been lost on America, because we're so selfish. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, um, talking about love, that love does not seek its own. That love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. This is so unrighteous that the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 19 that child sacrifice did not enter the mind of God. 
It is the only sin that, that I'm aware of. I read the Bible every day, and I and I have yet to see any other sin in the Bible where God says that that it did not enter His mind a child sacrifice. So, like, what do, what does that mean? That it didn't enter His mind. Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good question. I I part of part of um, what I think it means is that it's so heinous, so evil that they would do that, okay. that they would all offer their children on the altar to Molech. And what they would do, they would put their baby on these on these burning hot hands of this false idol, and the baby would sizzle to death. And the the lo the local um, tribesmen they would they would pound their drums while that's happening to drown out the screams of the child, so the parents cannot hear their children screaming as they're sizzling to death. But and that's awful. It's horrible. See, I've never like that's the thing. Like we not that we don't have knowledge of the Bible. This is a partic this particular topic we don't. You know, we haven't ever discussed because... Your family or, or who, who do you mean? With, with? I guess with our family in general. Okay. You know, my mom and dad, they have two children, just me and her. And cause when I got pregnant, they didn't have me until after they were married, so that wasn't a... And then um, her too, so... I had my kids, and um, I was in nursing school and engaged when I got pregnant. So, I was getting married. I was, you know, kept them anyway. My daughter is still married, you know, so like it's never been had to be a discussion. So we've never had a discussion about it. Like the topic of abortion. We've never had a discussion about it. Do you do you think that that's probably why your sister's in there now? Maybe. That's why that's why I'm asking y'all because I don't have any knowledge. I, I think that so, I mean honestly. But I my think dad that's... does say he doesn't agree with uh -huh. it, but that's about all he says about right, it. Right, but you're like, you okay, know? well where's the biblical context? Right, that's why for that? I just wanted just to know. Opinion? That's why yeah. I'm I'm out here asking just for myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I wrestled with it and I didn't sleep last night, you know, and came up here. She drove but I didn't want her to be alone. Are you guys all from Texas? She is. She is. Okay. Well, you drove, I you drove up from well, Texas, or huh? you drove up from Texas? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, but, did has it so it's been has it been bothering your conscience this whole time? Kinda like it's kind of a thing of you know I don't want her to go through any unnecessary struggles, but I feel like this is gonna be a whole nother one in itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even though, because she chose not to just deal with it or do you know adoption, it's, but it's it's yeah. her body, you know. So. Well, no, not, I, not exactly. It's, it's actually the baby. It's not her body. It's the ba the baby's inside her body. Mm -hmm. She has another body inside of her. I'm talking about like her carrying because I had mm -hmm. a horrible time carrying both of my kids. I stayed in the hospital, and I'm sure, I don't know if that's another thing she looked at. Like okay, because she looked at me struggle, and you know. So that's the other things that I I wrestled with myself is like is she scared to do this because of she how what I went through, you know when I carried my kids. or be or burned have, to death. Right, or the other gruesome ways that they have to end the life to get the baby out. And so the church is finally having to grapple with this again. And, and we're still suffering the consequences of this 
plant issue. And so we, as Christians, we want to see this resolved quickly. And for us to pursue a biblical mind on what does it mean to love our neighbor as ourselves? Well, it means no one should murder anyone, for one, right? And we shouldn't own other people. And, and that seems common sense today, but this is the new issue that the church has to wrestle with. And I wasn't really raised in the church I was in. Likewise. Where they would talk about this being a sin because so many Christians participate in it. And so what that means is once we start actually talking about how it is a sin, it's an affront to God because every person is an image bearer. It doesn't matter what country you're from, what ethnicity you are. God has said, blanket, every single person is an image bearer. And that's actually why we can't murder one another. The Bible doesn't say anything about not taking the life of animals or plants. Mm -hmm. But it does give prohibition against us, you know, taking the lives of other people. Right. Yeah. And so, well, why is that? Because we're the only part of creation that God made in his image with okay. special purpose. And then from that comes loving each other as we want to be loved. And so that really is what a lot of this is built on is we look at this and say, you no, know, this is violating both. We can't destroy image bearers. And that's not how I would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And so I would be a hypocrite allowing it to happen to little people when I definitely would be opposed to it happening to me or my boring kids or you or whoever. So, um, that's why we're out here is yeah. lo love for our neighbor. And trying to be consistent in that, in what we profess that we believe. If we believe that this is murder, which oh, yeah. it is, then we need to go to places where we know our neighbors are being murdered. And if we don't, then then saying that this is murder rings pretty hollow, or that just saying that we don't care about murder. And um, some people would say, well, if I knew where, like, you see a murder happen on the news, or you hear about it, or a group of people being murdered, do you think, if I knew when and where that was going to happen before, I would have done something about it. Well, here we do know when and where it happens every day all across America. And it's like, how can I be silent when, because I thought about that years ago too. If I knew when and where, then I would have tried to do something. Um, but well, now I do. And it's, these murders are silent. And most, most don't care about it. Most, even most professing Christians are, they look the other way. They walk by on the other side of the road, like the parable of the Good Samaritan. Their neighbors lie and die in the ditch. In this case, the neighbors being brutally murdered. And like, like the religious leaders, they see it and they choose to walk by on the other side of the road and totally neglect and abandon their neighbor unto death. And it took a good Samaritan to, to love that person bleeding to death. And so we're, we're just trying to be a good Samaritan to our freeborn neighbors because nobody in Wichita is more neglected or abandoned or hated than these children. And there's, and there's not many in this city who, who love these children. And, and that, and, and your nephew or niece is, is our neighbor, a fellow image bearer of God. And that's, I don't want that to haunt you, Chantel. I, um, it'll haunt you much worse than, than it haunts me today because you had a part in it. And even, like, even if you try to get her out now, if she, if she refuses, your sister, you're still going to have that haunt you like, oh, I drove her here. And I could have done more. Um, Call her. I think you already texted her. Um, you know, blow up her phone. You know, text her. Don't do this. Don't do this. You know, this is murder. Call her. Like, ten times, whatever it takes. Like, this, this is a life or death situation. And at, at least, that, at least, it, it will help your conscience knowing that you tried, even if you can't get her out. Um, you said they won't let you in there. Have you ever tried going in there? They what? If they put it in on the paperwork on the front page and everything. You cannot bring anybody inside. You can't nobody come in the bathroom. I, I do Why do you think that is? Because yes, are me too. Out. Yes. We're well, not yeah, usually yeah. out here. Well, well, there's no, usually hardly they, anybody out here. But they have, you know, like, they also like, um, yeah. pictures, like they were like, if people are outside yeah. protesting, yeah. just ignore them and walk in. So like they, you know, expect people to be out here trying to. There actually usually isn't real, hardly anyone out here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's actually a rare sight. I've, for months, there's been hardly anyone out here. But it's, but, 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 but think about that. Um, uh, you, usually I'm at the other death camp, the other murder place where they murder babies. So I'm not always able to be here. I'm, I'm like in another murder mill. But um, 
I was just thinking about that one. They won't let you in there. They won't let anyone but the moms who are murdering their babies in there. That should tell you something. There's a reason for that. And why? And two, why? That the fact that there's anyone out here right now, ask yourself this: If this was an actual doctor's office where they offered real health care, would there be anybody out here? I don't see. I don't see anyone out there on the sidewalk at, at doctor's offices. But I do. I do here. Not. I mean, not, not all the time. But that should tell people something that. Well, Maybe I know that, like, part of it, part of it is health care, like, far as the, because, you know, I'm, I'm a medical oh, student, so part of it is health care, but everybody knows Planned Parenthood strictly for, you know, for abortion. But, um, so, I feel like, far as, I guess, this, you know, kind of another topic, far as shutting down the Planned Parenthood, I don't agree with that, because some people do get free health care out of here, but if you want to, you know, ban abortion in that area, I don't say necessarily Uh, I mean, if, the, um, the abortion part, yeah, that's, you know, that's fine. But, and uh, they're not going to, you know why? Because, um, as the Bible says, <laughs> God says, all those who hate me love death. Mm -hmm. We're a nation full of people who hate God. Because we hate God, we love death. Mm -hmm. And we love death so much, we, and we don't, like, we, don't, we don't like responsibility in this country. And children are responsibility, right? We're all responsibility to our parents growing up. And... Um, then they're, they're not going to ban that and keep this open or really um, one day we're probably going to uh, abolish it and send it back to hell where it came from but um, but people don't want to end the murder of babies they don't uh, because that means they, they can't just have you know have sex and be responsible they got to they actually got to be responsible for their children if that makes sense that that th this gets this gets little boys who murder their babies guys who don't want to be responsible, they get them off the hook. They don't have to pay child support. And, and mothers, they don't have to raise their children for 18 years. They can murder them and then go continue to fornicate. And so that's, um, so that's, that's, I mean, as I tell them, like, if, you, if you want us to go away, just stop murdering babies and we'll go away. Stop murdering people. But they're not going to because people love death. They love murder in this country. And the Bible says that murderers will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Mm -hmm. And not, not just moms who murder their babies, but anyone who assisted in it, participated in it, mm -hmm. and someone who drove them. So, so think of that, that's Revelation chapter 21, verse eight. Everyone who took part in it, from the driver to the person who, who brings services to them, any kind of service, to the staff, it's a murderer and an accomplice to murder. Just like someone who robs a bank, the getaway driver who never sets foot in the bank, he's, he or she's just as guilty, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if your sister goes through with the murder, unless it's already happened, you're just as guilty. Yeah. And you don't and you don't want that on your conscience. I mean, right? like, far as that goes, like, I've accepted that. Like, I've accepted that. Like, I know that it's God is the forgiving God, but, like, so... If you repent. You got, you got exactly. to repent. You got to right. truly repent. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I've, we've both been taught to repent, repent and pray. And as far as her doing this, um, I don't think I could have, I don't, me know I don't think I could have changed her mind. Nobody could have changed her mind when it came to it. it did. Like, me texting her now? No. Does your sister think she's a Christian? Or did, or, did, or did she think God's going to forgive her if she murders her baby? I believe so. Like, well, a lot of, a lot of what, people... What's the verse that says, if you love me, you will obey my commands? John 14, 15. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I was like, that, so the Bible talks about those that really belong in Christ look like him. doesn't mean perfectly. And you're right, like, we do have to constantly repent in life, even as saved, redeemed believers, we mess up. But the heart of a true Christian looks different than someone that thinks they're a Christian but isn't because the true Christian, maybe like what you were talking about, they're, we're conflicted when there's wrong and we don't have rest from that until we've turned to Christ and said, you know what, I messed up on this point, please forgive me, versus someone that thinks they can just go and do whatever they want and they'll be good because God's just going to forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's Romans, yeah. 6, Romans chapter 6 covers that. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin? 
that grace may increase, may it never be, or God forbid, how shall we who died to sin still live in it? Mm -hmm. Later on in Romans chapter 6 says, Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And Romans chapter 6 really talks about that being a slave to sin versus being a slave to, to Jesus Christ to righteousness. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. So, it, um, I mean, a lot of those who say they're Christians go in to murder their babies, participate in it. Those who say that, that they believe in God, well, the Bible says that the demons believe and tremble. People go and murder their babies, they're not trembling. They, 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 they presume upon God's grace. And we, we've, I mean, we've, we've been there, we presumed upon God's grace, and, but we don't, we don't, it's not a, sin is not a practice of our lifestyles. We hate sin because the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And, um, and do you know where you stand before God, Chantel? Like, if you were to die today, do you any idea if you go to heaven or hell, or what would happen? I mean, like, are, are you asking me for, like, you can tell me that I'm going to go to hell, or, like, are you asking I'm asking because I don't, I, don't, I don't know. No, I think he's asking, like, I, if you've repented and accepted Christ yeah, to atone yeah, for Yes, like, I've been baptized, and she and I are totally victims. I've been baptized, you know, I got baptized. I made up, nobody made me. I got baptized on my own when I was 12. I don't know. My sister just came back home. She's been gone, you know. So we just this is still like a new this is new territory. Like for it's not going to stop being new to, um, the, the territory um, if, if this if she goes through with the murder. It's gonna it's gonna be a darkness or a stain upon your family. It's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. And uh, time heals, especially if let's say she comes to Christ. If your family comes to Christ, those who don't know Christ, but you're not going to forget about it. Right, yeah. It's that, that's what I'm saying. That's the, the things, like, I know it's not going to be going to happen. Right. But I don't know. Like, I don't know what other me measures she would have taken, you know. And did, 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 any, did any Christians, and in, in, maybe, she, maybe she didn't reach out, or you, maybe you didn't reach out, uh, did she try to reach out to any Christians, or did, did they try to help her in Texas? can to rescue her baby, your your nephew or niece. That that would be a good testimony. Like I, I tried, yes, forgive me, I drove you here, I shouldn't have done that. I know that God hates us. God says you shall not murder. But now I've repented and I'm gonna and I'm gonna do everything I can to try and and help you and, and my niece or nephew, your child. There there are many places here in Wichita. One just down the road you can walk down. It's called a better choice. Free sonogram, free ultrasound, free um, Anything. See, we don't have that in well, where we live anyway. I've never. Well, we 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 could help you find. Uh, fi like, there are places like that in Texas. We could help you find it. Actually, has a lot of resources yeah. for like. I know. I know Christians down there. Yeah, I know from you know when when I had mine, but like far as like ultra free ultrasound and stuff, I know I went to the doctor. So I'm. Mean, but I don't um, know. what what part yeah, of Texas are you from? From uh, Central. Central. Um, is that the city or just Central Texas? Just Central. Okay, is that is that anywhere near? Is that anywhere near Dallas or Houston or? Is it near Houston? Dallas. Dallas, okay. Dallas has a lot. Yeah, I. I I we know Christians there, um, and who and we could connect you with them. Uh, several Christians throughout Texas and in that area, we could connect you and your sister with, if if you need help. And homes for unwed mothers, pregnancy resource centers that help. Um, mothers all free of charge because um, we, we 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 actually we don't 
we don't want um, we don't make money doing this we we give money to to, to do it and to help people because we're christians we love it that's part of loving your neighbor and there if you need help here there, there's help available here and there are christians here including myself who would drive down there if we had to um and and, and offer help and because they're even the christians who aren't out here they they give they give much money uh, and you're, you're, you're welcome to tell this to um, your sister. Huh? The, um, there's an, orga an organization here in Wichita that has helped hundreds of mothers, hundreds over the years, um, paying their, their bills, their, um, their rent, their, their car payments, um, going to, even going above and beyond, um, like paying, uh, I'm not even sure how much money they paid out, but helping hundreds of mothers. And mothers who chose not to murder their babies to love their babies, and, and have, have helped them for years. And, and coming from people who aren't rich, who are poor. And, but God gives a, has given us the means to provide. Um, so that um, like when we, when we, when we um, exhort people to love their babies, we're, we're, um, we're there to back it up with, if you need help, let us help you. We may not be able to help with everything, but if you need help financially, we'll help. If you need help with um, you're about to get evicted or your parents are going to kick you out. We have homes that, there are, I know Christians that have invited moms into their homes. Um, I talked to a friend yesterday, they, I think they have a, a friend in their, in their house right now um, that, did, that, I don't, uh, that didn't murder her baby. And, and so like we um, invite moms, even with, who um, may have kind of, um, are, are messed up, invite them into our homes. And so, I mean, we, we do all that. We offer all that. And so at the end of the day, mom and dad who... Um, for her, I don't even think it's a lack of resources. It's just that she doesn't want to yeah. have a baby. Yeah. 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 It's not a lack of resources. Right. And I think that's why yeah. pointing, pointing her and others like that to scripture is so important because scripture informs our conscience, right? So God's law. And he, I think Nicholas was talking about that already. It's already written on all of our hearts. Most people don't need to be told that murder is wrong. Like, we just yeah. instinctively know. <laughs> we all know. I know people will still do that and, and beating up others and, and stealing and all that. But we know that we shouldn't be doing that. Well, why? It's God's law. Yeah. But pointing people back to that so that they're informed by God's law. And then also, when we do violate God's law, understanding that when we do truly repent and say, that was really wrong, help me to hate sin, God, give me a heart like yours. That he does do that and I, I keep thinking of the apostle paul do you know the story of paul before he became a christian he went by the name saul yes, originally yes. and so he he writes about how he was like the worst of sinners he actually hunted down christians to imprison them and murder them but then he found redemption in christ and so what that looked like for him is he turned like he no longer went and sought to murder others but he spoke out about how he had sinned and he had done wrong. And he called others to join him in repentance. And I think that would be really important for your sister moving forward, whether she goes through with this or not. Say, come come to Christ. Because that murder's not the only sin. Murder's not the only sin that sends us to hell. Right? And if you're I mean, pregnant, any, please any love your baby. Sin, any violation of God's law is what separates us from him. And this is just one way that we're separated. But using scripture to please love your baby ma'am if you're pregnant and love your baby just help out here if you need it mm -hmm. and then not store up wrath for i think what is it hebrews i always get the chapter messed up but where it says storing up wrath for yourselves on the day of judgment there's warning against going on and continuing to sin thinking you'll be good right because scripture actually says but god keeps tally of all these things we have to give an account for every single one of those line items and so we don't want people to continue racking up that wrath on the day of judgment if they don't repent. I saw a quote the other day from a pastor where he said, All sin has to be judged. It's either judged in what Christ did on the cross, or it will be judged in that individual in hell. So every sin is given an account for. It just depends on who's giving the accounting. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible says in, Eccle in Ecclesiastes, in, in the, the last verses, For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil, and we're all going to give an account to God. And and the, and the Bible says, and in, in also in Hebrews, 
it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God, a fearful thing. But the problem is, we don't have a fear of God of, in, the, in this nation. There's no fear of God before their eyes, says in Romans 3. And so it's, um, so please consider these things, uh, Chantel, and it, it may not, so it may not be too late. Um, at least trying to do everything you can to, to get her out and and because uh, you don't I know I know the guilt of failing to have done things I should have done yeah. um, and I tell you I would not want the guilt upon my conscience of a baby's life was in danger and I failed to to intervene and especially my family and uh, I mean I've I've failed to be out here on days when I should have been out here mm -hmm. um, and that, that it haunts my conscience. And um, even though I'd be by myself, it, that haunts my conscience. And it still does today, I wrestle with that, of having, not having been at the murder mills when I could have been. But it would haunt my conscience a whole lot more if a, if a baby in my family was gonna be murdered. Um, a baby was murdered, I, like I said, I didn't know about it over 20 years ago. And, and I didn't do anything or I didn't try, do everything I possibly could. And um, even even if it, even if I went to jail for it, and you know to peacefully try to rescue that um, my, my, my my child or the child of my family, I told my parents years ago, if someone if I find out someone in my family is going to murder their baby, I'm going to jail if I have to to rescue that child. And I wrestle. I mean, I wrestle with that with other people's children. Like, but it's just. Seeing that child the same way God sees that child, an image bearer of God, not not different than born people. In this country, we're very ageist. We 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 discriminate between born people and pre-born people. We've been conditioned to do that over the years, just like we were conditioned to do it during the days of chattel slavery. Same thing, except it's gone. We've gone from um, mistreating black people outside the womb. isn't here so I don't know if that means they're not murdering certain surgical murders today. Too late, Chantel. Here, you want to see if there's a pen in here? Hello. <coughs> in like the big pocket? Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's a funny pen. I didn't know that was in there.
or text me and I can get names to you. Um, just for future reference, but you know, depending on what happens today too, maybe you would want that information. We can't be quiet about about babies being murdered. Mm -hmm. Even though I am quiet myself, but I can't be quiet when my neighbors are being murdered. Yeah. If I was, and how could I be called a man or a Christian? Because real men speak up for little babies being murdered. Yeah. But we yeah. live in a culture where there aren't many men left. No. Right. They won't but speak up, or they won't step up. The way she talked about. Them. This topic of, you know, getting this done, it was like a different her. And she's like, no, I'm not, no. Not going to entertain yeah, other options. So, yeah, so. Well, God's mercy is bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And so, as the big sister, I'm a big sister too, I have two younger sisters. Mm -hmm. You can do your part in just directing her back to scripture. And if you don't know it real well, I mean, I encourage you to read through the Bible. And that way, you have those tools have God's word to give to her. you have a Bible? Yes. Okay. Do, do you read it? <coughs> Every day or on a regular basis? No, not, no, I don't read it the way I should. Yeah, most of us don't. That's, yeah. that's, that's why we end up in mess in this, mm -hmm. these situations. Yeah, but it's because that's why I, like, I, I asked because yeah. I didn't know. I don't know. It's been yeah. where to look. Yeah. So. Well, years ago, I was in that situation too. Mm -hmm. but by God's grace, I became a student of God's word. Because I, it's like I, I want to know what God says. We have His Word, and yet most of us don't even read it or we neglect it. I don't want to be like that anymore. I used to be. I used to be. I used to be like that, where I neglected God's Word, didn't read it every day. But now it's like I realize, what else is more important to me than God's Word? TV, entertainment, um, even being busy ministering on the streets. Um, no, I need to be in God's Word every day, and otherwise. I'm going to be trusting in my own opinions or other people's opinions, and I'm going to fall away. I don't want that. And that's the only um, the Bible says in Proverbs, for there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. And that's the way people live when they neglect God's word. And that where there is no vision, the people perish. But happy is he who keeps the law. This is why we're perishing, because we've lost our vision. The... Um, the Word of God, we, we put it on the shelf, collects dust, and we've taken the law of God, the um, Ten Commandments, prayer, out of, out of the public school system. This is why we have this today, because we've forgotten God. We collected His Word. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, it says in Hosea 4, 6. And we, we have Bibles, but and some people know the Bible, uh, you know, at least some, but, but they, they still neglect it. And they choose to murder their babies. They choose to do drugs, to get drunk, fornicate. They fornication leads to them murdering their babies. They get they choose to do all kinds of, of wicked things because they they want to go their own way. Well, and you asked such a good question that I don't think I've really heard anyone ask before. But you were like, "What does God's word say on this?" That's the most important question we can ask about everything, uh, whether it's <coughs> human trafficking or rape or slavery or abortion. Yeah, we should, what does God's word say on this? Does it prohibit it? Or does it allow it? Like, there's always one of those two. It's either prohibited or it's allowed and it's for the glory of God. So, I don't know, I just liked how you phrased that, that you're thinking in that term of, well, what does God's word instruct us on this topic? Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate that you asked that. I wish more people would ask me that. What does God's word say? Not, I'm going to give you my opinion or what's your opinion, but what does God's Word say? Right. I appreciate that. Well, I wish I'd ask it sooner than I did. Yeah. Because, like, for me, it's like I said, I haven't personally done this, mm -hmm. but, like... Praise God. I just want to know what it says about, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I know what a lot of people do. Like, I, I, the deepest conversation my parents have ever had with me was uh, my mom. Her sister had a, a child at 16. Uh-huh. And she said she had actually taken her, you know, put to a legal room. 
shown in scripture mm-hmm. why it was and then my church never talked about it growing up mm. so yeah. by time I started having my own kids I got married I I didn't fornicate outside of marriage so I felt you know pretty good about myself like oh look mm-hmm. I'm keeping the law I'm doing great mm-hmm. but I totally ignored this I knew it was going right. on and I wasn't loving my neighbors and it was just a couple of years ago that someone challenged me on it and I was like well I guess I better truly figure out what God said right. on this yeah. and even though I knew it was sin, I was actually remaining silent and complacent on it, which God also condemns. And that was horrifying for me to discover that. It's like, oh my goodness, like, God does not discount silence as innocence. He's going to hold that against me because I know what's wrong and I'm choosing not to speak up and do anything about it. And so that was just a heavy conviction. And so now here I am and I don't, it's uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but I would rather be at peace with God than peace with other fallible people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And this is what the Word of God says about those who murder the babies and those who are silent. It's very sobering. Leviticus chapter 20. And you can read it for yourself if you is like. This, is this King James? This is a New American Standard okay, Bible. Okay, okay, I can read that. Verse <laughs> 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 but likewise, verses 1 through 5. I'll just let you, let you read that for yourself. I better hold it because I got stuff in my Bible. Oh, okay. It might start falling out. It's been well used, I can tell. See, like, we've never, and I'm not, you know, faulting my dad for, you know, any of the, we've never had to talk about it, but, like, I don't, I've never heard of, you know. That this, section? Yes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's. I didn't years ago either. I wasn't familiar with it. That's the sweet thing about the Holy Spirit is if you belong to Christ, if he's, if you've turned to him and he's redeemed you, he opens your eyes to these things and he grows you in your knowledge of his word. I read that years ago and I didn't really think hard about what, it, what God was saying and I, I, I read I reread it and studied it recently and it's like wow and that so that that will help answer a question what God says about this it's pretty hard-hitting that um, and maybe you would like to read it again I'm not sure but um, You can take a screenshot if you can, like. Well, you can highlight in your Bible app. Yeah. And, and it just saves your highlight. Levit- Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. And there are many other scriptures, um, but that that's, uh, that was, that's pretty sobering right there. Chapter. Chap- Levit- Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. Some information, sir. Is that is that your baby in there about to be murdered? Please know God says you shall not murder. If there's any help you need, we're here to help. There are Christians here who will help. That's um and so like when I this one here, sorry. This one here too, Psalm 106. Uh, verses 
highlighted in red, so it's, it just stands out. That's what's happening here today. We see it differently because we've dehumanized our children as they dehumanize their born children in that time, just as we dehumanize black people in the 16, 17, 1800s. Um, and when you dehumanize people and you live in a culture where that's become accepted, um, it's hard to see it the way God sees it. It's hard to see these are people being murdered and unjustly mistreated because most people are blinded to it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving. So most people in America, even those in the churches, their eyes have been blinded to, to this so they don't see clearly, they don't see people being mass murdered like it's, it's, this is much different to them than a school shooting. Mm -hmm. Much different. They, it's, they still, would, it's still image bearers mm -hmm. being killed in, in different ways. And these, even children in a school, they could try to run away. And there are adults that, you know, try to get them to safety. Here, yeah. hardly anyone will try to get them to safety. Most are busy ignoring it. And these children, they got nowhere to go. They're, they're trapped inside their mother's body, got nowhere to go. So it's actually much worse. Many more people being mass murdered, all, not just here, but all, all over America. And not just one school classroom, but all over America. And, um, and our, our land, as it says, this land is polluted with blood. Hundreds of millions of little babies. So that's another one that talks about what God, what God says about this. And sacrificing their sons and daughters to the demons. That's what we're doing. And so that's part of seeing this rightly the way God sees it. And when you see it that way, that's why we're out here. Because we didn't used to see us rightly. Yeah, so um, I have another question. Yes, ma'am. About it, like sacrificing the children and the demons. Like, what, would, what was the purpose? Like, the whenever, the um, yeah, to, whenever for blessings, ahead. like, if we sacrifice. To benefit themselves. If we, okay. same, same reason as today. Yeah. We, if I sacrifice this child, um, then I'll be blessed. Uh, then I, I'll, I can be. I can continue my lifestyle. Okay. And same same for them. Well, they it, thought, yeah, they thought maybe it would bring rain or bring peace or something to their land. It would appease the fault that the, the, yeah. the uh, gods they served. And, and a lot of them said they loved their children, but it was more important to them to sacrifice and receive a better blessing on their life than to protect that child. So okay. we're not we're not laying them on the hands of the altar of Molech right now, but it, Molech is a demon. I mean, right. it, that spirit is the same today and Proverbs 8 36 says that those who hate God love death and then Jesus when he had a moment where he snapped at the Pharisees said you brood of vipers your father has been a murderer and a liar from the beginning so murder and death come that's associated with Satan always um, God is the giver of life not just physical life obviously we've been given physical life by God but he also then gives eternal life to those who repent of their sin and their love of sin mm -hmm. and ask Christ, okay, give me your heart. Give me your heart that hates this thing. And so um, it is still sacrifice today because you're, you're choosing something other than the child mm -hmm. that's more important. And so that's what we mean by sacrifice. You're giving up something to gain something else. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. And throughout history, mothers, and even today in America, mothers and throughout the world, they have died giving birth to their children. Mm -hmm. Today in America, um, it's, it's like that's such a horrible concept in our minds, like how dare you expect a mom to give up her life for a child? We turn that upside down. See, that's that's what, I'm, what I was saying about, like, I don't know if she's afraid because of all that I went through. Like, she mm -hmm. watched me go through with carrying my children. But, well, you see, you know, like... Because she's not very open about why. Well, it, it goes back to, and I'll just, I'll just be honest and blunt, lovingly, it's selfishness. It's, and we're, we're all selfish to an extent, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've had to repent. But that's the thing, but now I know that is one thing she has acknowledged. She, she's like, I'm too selfish to help you. Well, that's good she admits she, that. She, she said that before, this was years ago, you know, yeah. because. Um, so this is the fruit of that, that yeah. attitude. Right, okay. yes, because when I had my kids and stuff and all of that, she's like, like she was like, I see, I know. She was like, I know for already. No, for a fact, I'm not ready. And God knows I'm not ready. She, she said it years ago. I, like, I, I don't want to eat. 
accused by now because I'm too selfish to have kids. Yeah, I have a sister yeah. like that too. Uh -huh. Yeah. But she made the choice to, you know, have sex outside of marriage, right? right. Yeah. So you gotta be responsible. So that's what you sign yourself up for, you know. You gotta be responsible. You're gonna do that, so. Because so it. It's like <laughs> I did with mine, so it's like okay. You know. At first, like, you know, when I found out I was pregnant, like I said, I was in nursing school, and then I got sick and had my doctor. Yeah. Was like you, you got, you can't go, you got to stop, or you're gonna lose the baby, possibly die yourself. But um, when I first found out, I was like, I don't know if I'm. I was only 19, and then I saw him on the ultrasound, and that was, Changed, it. Yeah. That was it. That you know, was it. I had a very unusual example set from when I was really young. I was probably, I was a little bit younger than my oldest here, and my mom had an ectopic pregnancy, mm -hmm. so like her two first, and she was yeah. bleeding internally. And in the hospital, she had actually told the doctor that if the baby was alive, they weren't to touch it. Because a, a common thing is they'll just go ahead and take the baby out, even if it's alive. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you can't do that. You can't lay your hands on my child if it's still alive. And the doctor said, well, that it could be at your risk, you know, and you could die. And she was like, that life is in the hand of God. I'm not going to play God. Turns out the baby had already passed. But as a young kid, that really impacted me. And it's, I look back on that and I think I never had a doubt in my mind that my mom would lay her life. And whatever help you need, let us help. Because I saw her God says you shall her. not murder. Love your baby, her. mama. If you're and pregnant, love your baby. We're here to help if there's any help you need. God says you shall not murder. And we, we tend to fall short of that. And I, I've been far more selfish than my mom. And that example impacts me more today than Sir, the Bible did. says to act like I men. Think, wow, a real man would protect his baby. How, how she was modeling such biblicalness. It, mm -hmm. it never crossed my mind. But I recognize that that's a lot of bravery to be willing to lay down your life for someone else. And yeah, especially today in America. Very, because we're very comfortable. We're not, we're not really? called to step out of our comfort zone a whole lot. But it's something I'm still struggling with. Like, I still pray. I'm like, God, I don't know if I'm that brave. Give me that bravery for someone else. But we're going to have to take off. But it was yeah. it was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Um, if you need anything, call or text. Even just a chat. But I can get you connected with resources down in your area. So you're in a good spot to have people help. Nicholas, it was good seeing you. Nicholas, it's cool. I'll be praying for you guys. Thank you. That God gives you courage to say what you Drive safe when you go home. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening, Chantel. Nicholas. Nicholas. Nice to meet you. Likewise.